just cool. I don't know. Like, my hands just do that when I kind of, like, describe what I'm doing here. Um, but essentially, we're going to be taking the D, Z, and the N, and... What's going on guys? It's your boy Susie here, brings a video here today, bring you guys a Photoshop where you get your own cool, simplistic, dual tone banner design. Now, if you guys already know, the whole, I had a gradient video, right, like a two weeks ago or so, and I kind of showed you guys this cool little varieties between how to use dual tone gradients, and I kind of left the third variety, the third version, um, to just kind of like, you know, play with as a header design for Simplistic Series. As you guys know, the Simplistic Series on my channel, it's just basically taking a design and just making it just look super aesthetically pleasing as possible, but also being a very quick or one, two, three, or very simple for people who are just jumping into Photoshop and I just want to learn how to do some really cool designs, right? So if this series kind of interests you, I have a whole bunch of other ones. If you guys want to check them out, I probably will make a playlist if I don't have one already. But you guys should go definitely check it out. And of course, don't like on the video, you can see it down below. And if you guys didn't hear what I said, I said 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below. Secrets download. Sometimes I talk so fast that I feel like I need to repeat myself. <laughs> All right, anyway. So you guys know we're using a dual tone gradient with really cool just like I went with more of a style that's kind of capturing more of a whole horizontal lines. So in a sense you kind of see of course a horizontal line here, like a hidden horizontal line here. Maybe this is a little off here. I might need to like move that over a little bit, but kind of things like this. Very, very cool, very interesting, and just very it's it's so it I just for some reason this negative space, the cap it's just captivating to me. It's very attractive, it's very pleasing, it's just a very it's a very aesthetic looking design, and I think it looks really good for it it kind of does look really good for the whole simplistic series. So as you guys know, I would advise you guys to start off with using a picture. So before you start off, I would get a really cool landscape picture or just something that you think looks super just nice and cool and aesthetic. Maybe it's like flowers or a close-up shot of whatever it might be, right? So just get something really cool like that. And besides just using the horns on the lines, we have some patterns here if you guys want to. I will leave this pattern here in the description down below for you guys for free out of my pattern pack personally. It's $3 if you guys want to purchase it down below. It's very, very cool. I'm going to be updating it very, very soon as well. So don't forget about that. And uh, the whole thing about this, like I said before, is you have so many varieties. You can just do circles. You can do more solid shapes you can do really really cool things and of course this whole little design like dzn which is kind of like how we say design back in the day and whatnot um maybe you guys still say it now but i i just know this as design right for some reason like this three letter word to kind of shrink design um but yeah i think it's really cool just kind of like placing it in there just it just looks really cool kind of messing with the foreground and the background and even though having a white background it's just cool as hell so anyway i'm gonna get this thing going let's go ahead and get this video going so of course yeah let's just let's just go okay all right, homie, so let's go and get this thing going. So essentially, the only thing you're going to need, like I said before, is a picture to start. Maybe it's a cool landscape picture, like I said before, or a leaf picture close up. I have no clue. Or you have this really cool old person with wrinkles. Like, I think that's aesthetic, right? Um, Really, whatever gives you in the right mood, whatever trying to mood you're trying to per se or persuade people to, you know, feel, whatever, right? I would say use that picture for right here, right? So I'm going to be using that uh, little landscape picture I have before right here, uh, right here drag this baby in and we're gonna shrink this down just a little bit and I'm gonna keep this to the size we're gonna be basically to be using right so I'm gonna move this over to the left a little bit later on though but for now whatever just doesn't really matter where it's going where it's going but essentially right here on the adjustments adjustments excuse me we're gonna be using a gradient map now I did an entire video on this before but just in case you guys just did not know or really do not know how gradients really work it's sometimes slip people's minds it's not essentially two colors mixing together and that's just it because that's what I thought about for that's how I thought about gradients for a very 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 long time until I kind of got it and just understood that it's really essentially right excuse me if I click on the black and white it's basically black would be shadows right in the left hand side would be the shadows right hand side would be the highlights so the white would be the highlight so if you were to click on this black and you were trying to find a really cool sort of gradient I would always go with on the left hand side for the shadows I would choose a color anywhere I think the let's just say this is like 25 25 25 25 right so I just say the 25% on the bottom of this uh, square here is where I would stay right that way you have more darker tone colors um like no like crazy high saturation stuff like this because that's just not going to work out for you so anyone in the shadows right keep it around here so I'm going to say, <clears throat> I want to get a really cool purple. Let's just say we have all of our purples, or excuse me, all of our shadows and we have a purple hue to it, right? Press OK. If I go on the highlights now, let's just say green, right? 
right? Oh, also let me go ahead and just uh, clip mask this layer onto the actual image alone. So if you guys wanted to do that, just put the gradient map above the image like it should be already. Right click on it, clip mask it, it'll be right there just like so, nice little arrow pointing them on that image right here. But yeah, essentially it's really cool, really cool, right? So you can just have the greens only be highlights. Um, you can have them be red. I think this looks really, really dope. I have that one saved right here. Um, it's just really cool. So if you wanted to as well, you don't have a purple shadows. You can just say, hey, I want more orange shadows. It doesn't look quite great on a orange, uh, excuse me, red highlight. So if I want to say, hey, let's just try to figure out. Oh, okay. So an orange shadows looks really good on like a blue. What good? <laughs> looks really good on a like green, excuse me, highlight. So essentially it's just shadows and highlights. So hopefully you guys kind of understand it a little bit more because it might just not click for you. I don't know. It might not it just might not click for you. Oh, what else? But I'm going to be using this code scheme here, a nice cool blue. And for me, I'm actually going to lower this down a little bit more, make it a little more darker, right? And then we're going to have a nice little yellow as well for our highlights. So dark blue and yellow work really good together. It's almost like a navy blue, right? So that's going to be code scheme I'm going to be using in today's video here today. So now that I have that all settled, I'm going to go ahead and do the text next, right? So this text right here is pretty cool because essentially we're trying to go with aesthetics, right? I'm just going to make things look really cool and just like, just just cool i don't know like my hands just do that when i kind of like describe what i'm doing here um but essentially we're going to be taking the d z and the n and anyway um okay we're going to take the 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 word design <laughs> and we're going to take the z and just put that in the in... <laughs> let me just laugh for a quick second okay got this we're good we're good we're good and the Z, we're gonna put this in the in the background, right? And we're gonna have the actual bottom stem of the Z be in the foreground. Okay, so let's just go ahead and uh, we're gonna press this plus, just press the, press the text button, and we're gonna go ahead and just D Z N, right? Very simple. The the font that I'm using, by the way, is over to the top left. So please, for the love of God, stop asking me in the comment section below. It's called the next font. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and make this a little bit more bigger, like so, a little bit more. Right there. I think right about there is a pretty good size for this. Um, all right, cool. Let's just go ahead and change this color to like more of this color right here. Right, nice, more, a little more darker, which is a little bit off. Anyway, right, so I would essentially say that this can be your name, this can be your initials, it can be whatever the heck you guys want it to be. It doesn't have to be three letters, it could be one letter. I did it in the actual demonstration before, I, I had an X, right? So mine was like an X, it's like a really cool bigger X like right there, like you don't have to have DZN, you don't have to have your name, your initials, you can have whatever the heck you guys want, but I would say keep it to a minimum of maybe four letters, no more than four letters, honestly, because I think it's just, it looks way cooler. Also, if you're gonna do more than four letters, maybe you can do something like right here, I have simplistic, more, you know, stretched out, right? So whatever way you wanna do it, I would just personally say this is probably the best method of, of doing so. Um, I just noticed that my image here is a little bit smaller. And then DZN is, quite a bit bigger i wanted to at least get the it, somewhat of the same ratio before so you guys don't have to be like yo it look, doesn't look the same all right relax okay so what i'm also going to do is i'm going to make sure that this angle here hits that right there in that little corner of the edge uh, you don't have to do that but aesthetically it looks good actually i'm just gonna i'm gonna just let's say halfway is uh, a little less than halfway whatever right it doesn't really matter anyway i'm gonna show you guys how to do this little whole foreground and uh, background thing so really what you're gonna be doing is we're gonna make it a duplicate we're gonna put this below here by the way but it's behind there because essentially we just need that Z behind the actual background. So if I make a duplicate and I bring this up just like so, what I'm going to basically be doing here is I'm going to go ahead and take the Z and just highlight this and make this yellow. Essentially, the first thing I'm going to do is make this Z yellow. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to rasterize this layer once I've done that and make it, made it yellow, right? Because everything else is pretty much fine. All we're going to be really working with is the Z itself because really what's happening is the D is basically the only other letter that has a background to it, but essentially it's above it anyway, so there's no real editing has to happen. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to just simply rasterize this layer. Otherwise, you won't be able to actually erase things or cut things out i'm gonna take my marquee tool here and since our background has a very sharp edge right here right so if i just lower this opacity down a little bit it has a very sharp edge so i'm gonna just say to myself let's just take this edge it doesn't really matter about that but oh it does a little bit okay let's just go ahead drag that down just right so it's really perfectly on this edge it's gonna cut right here which is what we want and it's just gonna cut right here at the stop of this line right here. That's exactly what we want. So although I don't actually like this little stem here, I think I did this before. I'm gonna just take this and just bring this a little bit further down, just like so. Press enter, that way this is our selection. So I can just bring this back up to a higher opacity. And then simply just press delete on your keyboard 
And if you really wanted to, if you didn't know about this already before, but I'm going to quickly, if I'm going to do this, let me quickly do this really quick, right? So I'm going to do, if you guys don't know already before, if you don't want to use an eraser and if you have trouble messing up a lot, um, use this masking tool right here, this masking layer, layer mask, right? Basically, essentially, if you use a, on an eraser, if you're using a black brush, I believe is on a white background here. Nope, it's white on white with the eraser. So basically, if you click on this little thumbnail, this little thumbnail is gonna happen when you actually click on the selection mask. It's gonna basically erase once you have a white eraser or a black brush, they vice versa, that's why I got mixed up. But with a white eraser on this little layer here, it's gonna erase. So if you wanna change it to black now, it'll fill it back in. Now, like I said before, you can use a brush as well. Essentially, black is gonna now erase and then white is gonna fill it in. So it really doesn't matter which one you guys use, just know that that is an option for you guys to do so. And I already made this little uh, selection right here. What you're gonna do is you can basically just use whatever fill it is. I believe it's, mm, we're on the, we'll say the brush, and you're just gonna be using a black, right? So you're gonna fill it in with black. Or if you want to, you can just simply take your eraser on this layer here, and then just erase it just like so with that white eraser on this uh, little, mm, on this little masking little background here. I don't know why I was missing up for a second, but essentially that's all done now. So now you can do this really cool little, uh, I guess, stem here. This might mess you up a little bit. Essentially, if you don't wanna get rid of that, you might have to both rasterize the background layer and this layer because if you just were to only cut this out here it's about right here let's just say this let's just take the eraser so it's a little easier to follow right erase that just like so we're gonna have this background like this layer in the background still here so if you wanted to you can just duplicate this again rasterize. i didn't do this before but just so you guys know duplicate it again rasterize it and then get rid of this as well right and also since the background this one has a blue this is gonna have a really awkward little outline of a blue so just erase that as well just just with the eraser is pretty fine so now you have a really nice clean z but the of course this weight here is a little bit different than this weight but that's okay i mean the, the width itself um so essentially that's okay but pretty much to finish this thing out pretty, pretty much to finish this thing off is you're gonna be using the marquee tool just like so taking this and making a fair a fair i guess mid size of this little one right here and we're gonna make this one white so on this new layer i already have a white on my for uh my foreground just like so you see that uh, that's this seems that's a background anyway fill that in i can just put control backspace a quick fill your background in and then i'm gonna make a duplicate just like so now if you guys did not know how to keep it on the same axis that you see me like you see the lines that are perfectly i'm not moving it just alone with like this i'm not trying to like kind of guess it all and like things like that right most of you guys are probably like trying to duplicate and move it be like hey how do i get this perfectly but if ever you if you have the guidelines off or whatever it's really hard sometimes to make sure you have it on the same exact axis the x-axis the y-axis whatever way you're moving it up and down left and right Basically, if you make a duplicate, I'm holding Alt, right, and Shift. The reason why I'm holding Alt and Shift is if I hold Alt alone on a layer, no matter what, it will duplicate it, just like so. However, if I hold Alt and Shift, and then I start moving it, I'll move it left for like this instance, right? I can no longer move it up and down. So I can no longer ever, ever get rid or leave the actual axis that I'm on. And it'll, it'll make sure it kind of keeps everything on the same exact point, on the same exact line. And it just makes it really easy. If you guys didn't know little tip, I would say so. Uh, it's like an essential one. So now I can make a duplicate. Just move it up just like that. I moved it to one pixel off to the left. Anyway, we're going to make this one. And we're going to make this one. Uh, let's just make this one blue. Just like so, right? So now we have this really cool little aesthetic, little DZN kind of going in and out of the background, kind of making the foreground, the background essentially in some, in some cases, whatever way you look at it. So it's really cool. So I guess next would be kind of like maybe cutting this out. Let's just do that right now. All I really did was figured out which one was the one I mainly, it's not this one. Let's just make this red so we know this is the main DZN text. Uh, let's just get rid of this N on that DZN text, right? Because there is one right here. I just erase it just like so. So what I can do now is you can see if I just hide this one alone, now the end stands alone. So what I'm gonna do now is on this end right here, we'll use the uh, masking tool. We're just gonna simply uh, just erase it, right? And I'll move this a little further down, erase it, just like so. And what I'll do is I'll make a new layer, clipping mask this new layer to that layer that's on the bottom, which is basically the end, right? Highlight this little one right here change the color of your foreground to yellow and you can press alt backspace or right click fill the color you want to choose yellow press ok press ok again it'll fill it in with yellow again as well right deselect that now you have this really cool end looks pretty cool as well so now essentially what i do is i'll show you guys how to do maybe like the lines essentially these lines are, are obvious right some of these are really obvious to you so it's really just me kind of like redoing it so if i were to make a new layer marquee tool and we're just going to go ahead and take this line make a very simple nice skinny uh, rectangle here. I'll make this one. Let's just make sure we choose the same color as always. So I'm going to use a text color to always make sure I have a nice yellow and a nice blue. 
So Alt Backspace to quick fill that in. I can just make a duplicate by holding Alt and Shift, rotate it with Free Transform, and put that baby right here, just like so. Right now, I gotta, I'll get rid of this. I don't want it to be that big. Let's just say that's pretty good, right? Okay, so now I have this here. Let's just move both of these to kind of make sure we have the same spacing here, same spacing here. Is it essentially the same spacing? Also, this is off by one pixel. Group that together. I believe it, it is, right? It wouldn't give me those, those guidelines if it's not. So we have the same spacing there. Now, I kind of erase it very willingly, just kind of like did whatever, right? So what I did was I did group these layers together by holding, uh, I'll just do it all over again, right? Control click on both of these, right? These two layers are those two layers right here. And then hold Control G, just like so, and I grouped them together. And then what we can do is you can press Control E to then merge that group together, essentially to have one layer. Now it's just one thing right here, no longer two layers. You can take your marquee tool on the top left and your keyboard, and you can go ahead and just simply just erase, erase. And let's just give this one a little bit of a different erase, like maybe a, a larger erase here. And then maybe like a very short erase right there. So I don't know, it's just whatever you really want it to do. You can even like go ahead and say, what if this is a thicker line, but it's not. What I would do right now, I see something different, right? I would kind of get the this halfway, I guess size of this rectangle here, move this in the halfway point of here, move this down here and kind of find out where the middle is. Maybe around here is where the middle would be, right? I was kind of guessing, but it's whatever. It's kind of like a more off the off the books kind of thing. All backspace, quick fill that in. Now it just looks really cool, right? So aesthetically, it's like, hey, in between this spacing is a halfway line, horizontal line of this uh, little line that's just randomly erased like so. So there's like a little bit of that messy neatness to it. I don't know how I would, how else I would like kind of, I guess, describe that, but it's really cool. So I have a yellow line right here as well. So let's just go ahead and put that baby in there as well. Let's go. Oh, that's what that is. Sorry. Okay. But we're going to make a nice little yellow line. Put that like right here. Quick fill that in. Just like so. I use a different thickness. You guys can use the same thickness if you guys want to. But keeping it loose sometimes is really pretty cool as well. Uh, just like that. Let's just say right about there. Okay. So let's just say that's pretty good as well. Now let's go ahead and just put the word simplistic in here. Simplistic using the same font, the next font, just like so. Is this yellow too? Okay, so I made it two different tones of colors. So if you guys know how to bring up the characters table, if you go to your windows, it should be just right here, characters. This is where I kind of change a lot of my sizing and stuff like that. So if I were to put this to six, um, maybe four, right? And then this VA is actually how you split it. So this is kind of how you have the actual letters kind of split apart, if you guys know already, right? Maybe like that. I'll make it about five this time, actually. And I can move this right about here. Now what I feel like I need to do is I need to move the, where's this? Okay, it's right here. And this, All right? Move that in the middle of this. Excuse me. Now if you guys didn't see what I did, by, by the way, when you have your layers freely out like this, or if you have them in a group themselves, you can hold control and actually select the actual layer. You can see it gets selected just like so, right? Then I can move it. So if you want to select multiple, if you want to be like, hey, where's, um the this text right and then where's this line here hold shift you can select both of them and then move them at the same time little trick if you guys know how to use it i've been using it very loosely kind of and i kind of like started using it mentally i guess uh more naturally but i don't have been using it too much before so if you see me select the layer it's because i'm holding control and i'm just clicking on it just like so right i don't know if that's like a thing you have to enable but if you guys know about it now you guys know oops i don't want to do that i want to go ahead and highlight this and we're gonna make this yellow as well Cool. So now I believe it's just like these lines right here. Very simple. Just same thing as uh, same thing again. Let's just use a marquee tool, right? Make a yellow foreground and then take this, make this half of this size. Technically is what I pretty much did before. And then change this layer with the actual layer style and then make that blue, right? And that can rash as a layer. That way you can always put other things on it without messing up with the whole color overlay. Cause sometimes color overlay defaults above a lot of different things. Like, uh, like inner shadow you won't be able to see things like that right so basically then that changes the color on that layer makes you always rasterize so with a color overlay rasterize because essentially you just change the color and that's basically it so it's easy to change it again so always rasterize the layer i believe when you do change the color anyway i believe i have graphic designer up here so graphic designer i don't know if i spelt it right because i need to make this zero again and make this eight zero enter there we go Nope, that's definitely not how you spell designer. Designer, just like so. Okay, there we go, right? We're gonna make this blue, right? We have that right there, and that can have like a stab, which 2012 is when I basically started graphic design. 
and then this is more of like the loosely kind of things you guys probably already know how to do the rest of this kind of stuff but i'm gonna give you guys a little bit of tips in a quick second here so if you guys do stay um you'll you'll probably be happy about it anyway make this a little wider just like this and i'll make the opposite be yellow right so kind of have that little hatch pattern going on there so now we have that right there let's say um okay so the boxes right so what i basically did with the boxes i had it behind the actual i'll just put it behind everything so on the bottom of everything new layer uh, rectangle marking tool if you guys want to and then I'm gonna say this is gonna be yellow. The reason why I chose the color, because you wanna work with two colors, right? So hopefully your picture kinda has shadows and highlights separated like my mountain zoo. Um, that way you can just say, hey, how, which color should this be? It should definitely be yellow because what's in front of it is uh, blue, right? So I can just do that over there. And then for over here, I'll make this one a little bit larger. Uh, that's about the same. Right, double click on this, color overlay, we'll make that blue because it's on a yellow, right? So essentially it's really cool to kind of figure out how that's gonna work because we only have two colors to really work with, so it's really easy to kind of figure out where colors should be essentially. Um, Like I was saying before in the beginning of the video, you can also use circles, right? So I'm gonna say over here, I can use the ellipse tool, take this ellipse tool, holding alt and shift basically it has it so you can click in the same spot, it'll stay in that same spot and holding shift, it'll make a perfect circle for you guys. Right, so if I just do this, and I can have my stroke turned on, it's already turned on. This is your stroke, this is your fill. Have your stroke turned on, have your fill turned off. Right, that's what that little uh, slash is. Take this, you can put this up, it's a white right now, so let's change that to the blue that we've been using. Right, you can make this, let's just bring this up like so. Right, you can have like, you can be using circles, maybe have it in the between the M and the P, just like so. And uh, I think that looks pretty cool, pretty good. And we'll do one over here if you wanted to. I don't want to actually do it, so I'm going to just erase it. But just know that you guys can also use circles as well, right? So I'm going to get rid of that. But what I'm going to do, lastly, I'm going to, I believe I already said this. If I did not say this, um, your patterns, I, if, you don't have, if you guys have no hatch patterns, um, which basically are patterns that look like this. Let me show you guys in one second. I'm going to make a nice little box for it, right, on a new layer. Fill it in with any color whatsoever. It does not matter at all. Take your fill and lower it down to zero. If you guys know what that does, it's basically like opacity, but still shows layer styles, right? So if I go ahead and back over here, go to my layer styles pattern overlay, and I'm gonna go ahead and just use, I don't wanna use the lines on this one, but I wanna use, uh, we'll use this little hatch kind of thing right here. So having these little cool things, these little patterns are really cool. I'm gonna give you guys this one away for free in the description down below. It's just basically a little pattern. If you guys go on your, if you don't know how to actually put in patterns, pattern overlay, click on this little page here, Oh, it's already a preset. Sorry, not the page. Where's the cogwheel? You have to click on it itself and then cogwheel and then you're going to just be doing load patterns. And when you load the pattern in, it'll give you my pattern. That I'm going to give you guys for free. And if you guys want to make your own patterns, save your patterns. You can just make your own hatches. If you guys don't know, to, just look up how to make a hatch pattern. You'll be able to figure it out. Very, very easy. But I already have a pack for it for $3 in the description down below. If you guys want to purchase the entire thing, which has basically all of these Really cool. That that's actually pretty cool as well. I might use this one in case right, this time actually. Yeah, let's use this one this time actually. So essentially, if you want to change the color, like I have it over here, I have one color being uh, this little blue, one other color being yellow. So essentially, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer, right? Use my pen tool. I'm gonna go in between this slash here, so about halfway or whatever way you want to go through, and I'll say that's pretty good. Right on this new layer, right click, fill this layer in with yellow. Press OK. Press OK again, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold. Uh, excuse me right click and then clipping mask it but before you do anything make sure you guys rash dry this pattern layer because otherwise it's not going to work out for you guys it's kind of like using a color overlay as well just like so and that's about that for that one right here so what we can do now is we'll do one more on the uh left hand side we'll make this one a very kind of more just like square and like cut off and whatnot right fill it in with any color doesn't matter whatsoever lower the fill double click over here pattern overlay and we will use the solid lines. And now, if you guys want to, again, raster it immediately. New layer, clipping mask that new layer, take halfway. Now, you don't always have to use two separate colors, or you don't, you don't excuse me, you don't have to always split your colors together or split your colors, split your colors, period. Um, but right click, fill this in color yellow, just like so, right? And then you kind of have a nice, of course, again, yellow and blue. But you don't have to always do that, just know that there's an option, right? But that is kind of not it right so i did essentially say like in the beginning kind of like you know kind of space it and it has all about space stuff like that but for me for some reason when i just kind of was doing this right here i said like what happens when i actually make what make more negative space right so hold on one second 
Okay, we're good. Anyway, so so essentially what I would do is I would kind of shrink this entire thing. So I was kind of saying, like I said before, what if I had more white? So what I did was I grouped everything together besides the white background. Press Control G if you want to group it all together, just like so. And then press Control T to then free transform it. What I'm going to do now, if I hold Alt and Shift, take a corner, shrink this down a little bit. And now I get more white space, more negative space. And for some reason, to me, this just looks so like freaking cool. Right, so what I can do now is I can go back in, like I have everything in a group, hold control, select what I want to select, move it, and kind of like space everything out again. So, this and this, I want to move. Uh, maybe I want to move this over here and this over here. I already have it selected. Maybe I want to move this and put that over here, right? You can just kind of figure things out. Like I said, maybe even adding more space and then doing a other, like another entire new layer of like random things. I don't know. It's super cool. I hope you guys do enjoy this today's video. It's very, it's just very aesthetic and very cool, pleasing and of you know kind of easy. So it is simplistic, right? So um, that's basically it. So hope you guys do enjoy. Two hundred likes on the video because a secret down below as always, guys. Um, also by the way, just so you guys just wait one second. There's there's wait there's more. Okay, right. One more thing I almost forgot. If you use a color balance, excuse me, spit a little bit. That was weird. Uh, if you use a color balance when you want to change your colors around, um, maybe to get a nice little hue. For some reason, right, I kind of figured out that if I take this red, oh my god, you can get different colors, right? So it's just going to change your kind of two-tone, uh, excuse me, your two-tone colors, but give it a chance. You might get some really, oh my god, look at that, oh my god. It, you might get some really cool colors. Um, So yeah, that's basically it. That's all I wanted to say, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, leave a like on the video. Uh, Comment on anything you guys want to see me do, and you can see a really cool style. You want to tweet it at me, be like, hey, so can you like, kind of give a reference of how to do this? Maybe I'll do it. Who never? You never know. You never know at all. Um. Also, follow me on Twitter at SissoHQ. Check out my Selfie, Selfie.com slash SissoHQ for any pre-mades and packs. It's always $3. As you guys saw, my pattern pack is one of those things that gets updated for you guys. Mostly everything. Also, you should check out the everything pack. One purchase of $30. You get everything in my store for free. And, of course, everything is not essentially for free, but you get everything in my store and then future products for free. So, it's pretty cool. Um, Yeah, that's it for me. We're going to get, we're going to just go because I got I got work to do, bros, and I'm super tired. But, hey, whatever. Um, Okay, let's, uh, let's just go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Talk to you guys later. So let's wait you out. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later.